Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We start with some satellite-derived precipitation estimates here from the time period of April 25th through May the 12th, and I want to focus in on southern Brazil. Now, when you look at this, we did notice that better precipitation did move through parts of Rio Grande do Sul into Santa Catarina. But when we think about where um, the majority of this safrina crop is grown in southern Brazil, it's going to be uh, here in, in, in Parna, Mato Grosso do Sul, Sao Paulo, and, and north. And a lot of the precipitation was over here on the eastern side of Parana, and that is not where the majority of the of the fields are. They're on the western and northern side. And this pocket right in through here that you can see that's been quite dry is substantial into Mato Grosso do Sul and over toward um, uh, Sao Paulo and then eventually up into Bahia, Minas Gerais, and there's even been a dry stretch right in through there through um, Mato Grosso. So the idea here is that we have a significant portion of the um, safrina crop that remains under drought stress as we work our way through the middle of the month of May. And this is just some new evidence of it. Now remember, satellite-derived precipitation. We only have a few platforms in space that have active radar. Um, and therefore, a lot of this is derived using cloud top temperature, which at times gives us a bit of an overestimate. So to compare that to some rain gauge data, now this is for the whole of southern Brazil. So that includes all the way down to Rio Grande do Sul, up through Mato Grosso, and then over towards Sao Paulo. So when you put all that together, I just want to show you that this time period uh, over the last uh, 180 days or six months, uh, where we currently sit right now, uh, is several inches off of, of normal here. And to put this into rank, this would be the fifth driest such time period that we've had on record. And it's these long stretches of dry weather in through here that are really starting to stress this crop. We can see some of that stress if we look on satellite. So we're going to do this. We did this last week or two weeks ago. We're just going to get an update here. This is NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And just a quick reminder, the more we are on this side of the color bar, the healthier the plants look from space. And on this side, the less healthy. Now, what I'm showing to you here is panel A, which would have been May 12th, 2020. And what I'd like to do now is I want to slide over this, okay? And let's just get oriented here at Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sol, Parna. So let's watch this area here. Uh, this was last year at this time. And as I slide this over, you're going to see this year. Now, what I notice as I just kind of rock back and forth here is I want you to keep your eye from Sao Paulo to Parna to Mato Grosso do Sol. What you're seeing here is this year. And this was a year ago. In fact, let me just zoom in on that area specifically. So here we are. Uh, panel A is 2020. As I go through this, this is now 2021. And what you notice is there's a lot more of those bluer colors showing up, indicating greater stress as viewed from space. And this is the these are the areas that we are most concerned about. Now, do we have precipitation moving into this area soon? Well, we can take a look at this a few different ways. Um, this is um, from the uh, latest European model run today on the 13th. Now, we're going to be dry for much of the next week. Very limited moisture. I mean, you don't see anything returning here through the weekend and then into early next week. This is Monday into Tuesday. Now, at that point on Tuesday, I'm going to watch a deeper set of low pressure systems on the, over here in the Pacific Ocean. And the models are suggesting that as they get over the Andes Mountains, a pretty vigorous front is going to move through here. But we are way out there in the forecast. This is all the way uh, into next Thursday and Friday. And it's going to push a frontal boundary here straight through uh, parts of Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, southern Brazil, such that all the way out next Friday night, we might be bringing in some precipitation into this area. If we kind of just put all this together and look at total accumulated precip, this is what we're expecting. I'll just show you. That's all the way out to day 10. So you notice that this area is going to remain very dry. In fact, models are not predicting precipitation at all for a large section of the safrina crop. And down even into Paraná, the moisture that's coming in here, well, let me just step you back. It doesn't get there until next Friday. So we're going to go at least another eight days of very dry weather in southern Brazil uh, as well. And remember, we've seen these fronts move toward the north and then really fizzle once they get to Santa Catarina, not returning the moisture to Parana. And I have to say that recent model trends would suggest that we need to be watching for that late next week. 
from there, let's go out and just look at what week two looks like from the European. And what we're seeing here is the effect of that front coming through. Now, this is the European ensemble at that time period. But I, I want to be clear on what we're viewing here, all right? Because this is not a wet time of year. So if I show you total precipitation from now through the 27th of May, uh, this area in through here it is likely that a large section there will not measure precipitation. And if they do, it's going to be very light under, you know, five to 10 millimeters of rainfall. What's coming through southern Brazil here, possibly, if the models have got this uh, clued in on, could see upwards of 30 millimeters of rainfall. And that's an inch. Uh, but I've told you so many times I've observed the models attempting to predict that precipitation pattern and the fronts fail to advance to the north and they get over the drier air and it's just unable to produce the precipitation totals that were the model predicted. So we'll watch it carefully. It's still another eight days out before this comes in, but the majority of the safrina crop is going to be very, very dry moving forward. I'll keep you updated. I'll talk to you again on Monday as, after we watch these weekend model trends and we'll see what the latest evidence is of uh, seeing this front next week. Talk to you then. Thanks.